Hello lovelies, these are my predictions for AQA Physics Paper 2. But please remember, you should revise absolutely everything because I am not an examiner, I have not seen this year's exam papers, I do not know exactly what is going to be on the papers. These are just my best guesses based on lots and lots of experience and lots and lots of looking at papers. And um, so to go with these, I've written predictive papers where I've written questions based on topics I think have come up and then the other thing that I've done is I've walked you through the papers. So how to structure your maths and physics questions to really, really get the point across the examiner and um, how to structure your six mark questions so you can clearly show that you know what you're talking about are all available for you already. Now, I'm going to start with combined science and then we're going to move on to separate science. So if that's where you want, then you can skip to that. So for combined science, we know that 30% of your maths, that your physics grade is going to be maths in physics. Now, the one had a lot in there, but there are still loads and loads of equations that are paper two only. So you don't need to learn your equations for this year, but please go and learn your units. I will, can't remember which side it is, link the video where I go through all of the units really, really quickly for you. Some of the ones that came up in paper one can come up in paper two as well. So don't ignore things, don't forget things. Um, please spend some time learning your units. Now, the impression was that paper one didn't have a huge amount of practicals in it. So we can expect a few more practicals to maybe pop up in paper two, because we do have to have 15% of our grade based on practicals. So one of the things I would like you to spend some time looking at, we're thinking about magnets, magnetic fields, and the motor effect here. One of the big practicals I'd like you to look at is acceleration. So thinking about cars, thinking about stopping distances, thinking about inertia, um, the practical to go with that, and all the maths, because um, there are loads and loads of different things we could change about this practical. So moving the trolley along a plane or down a slope, um, loads of things we can different um, measure about this and remember the practical that you see in the exam may not be exactly the same as the practical that you've done in class so there might be some differences now this practical um, is a tricksy one because there are lots of things you need to pay attention to in this practical so if you're not familiar with it go look at the practical handbook on the exam board's website so another big area of this is movement along a line now this just sounds kind of like a really really simple obvious topic but we've got things like distance time we've got things like velocity time graphs that could be a really really big part of this um, so we're getting really really confident with those this is a lovely crossover topic with math so it's definitely worth spending time on this all of the associated uh, calculations that go with this so we're thinking about momentum we're thinking about the acceleration practical as well so thinking about practical so the acceleration practical this is an absolutely massive massive topic but i'd also like you to look at the waves practical as well now please do not forget is not just waves in a ripple tank it is also a standing wave that is mentioned in the practical handbook so they do expect you to know both of those practicals so if something slightly different comes up in the exam please don't get too surprised by it to go with the waves practical we need to be able to kind of like look at different types of waves so are you confident with the difference between transverse and longitudinal waves and their uses are you confident with everything to do with their properties and uses the electromagnetic spectrum can you draw a wave label all the parts of it do all the different maths can you compare one end of the electromagnetic spectrum to the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Can you talk about the uses of waves in everyday life? And then the last practical that I would like you to look at is the spring practical. So Hooke's Law, there are loads and loads of things that could come up with this. So linking it through to graphs, linking it through to math, linking it through to the actual experimental technique behind this. Um, so big focus on practicals here, um, we know they need to be 15% of your grade but then we could link them through to maths in loads and loads of different ways. So there you go guys, that is my like starter list um, for your revision but please remember to write absolutely everything and if there's anything about practicals that you're not sure about then you can go and watch the, the walkthrough where I walk you through some questions based on these practicals. So this is my list for separate science. Now we know for physics 
maths is a big part of physics. It's going to be 30% of your grade. And, um, you know, everyone got the impression that paper one is very, very math heavy, but still we are going to have maths in paper two. So your units are an absolute essential. And I'll link, I can't remember which side, the, the um, video where I go through all of the units really, really quickly because they are core to interpreting the question and really, really understanding things. Um, in the walkthrough that I've done for you, I take you through how to answer loads and loads of maths in physics questions if that's an area you know you don't feel very confident about. So topic wise, what I'd like you to look at is like magnets and the motor effect. So, you know, can you actually work out where the force is going to be if the current is flowing in this direction, including the transformer and the generator effect? Um, those are nasty topics that people don't tend to like, but if you have a proper understanding of these when you go into the exam, you're going to be in a really, really good position. So looking at pressure in fluids as well. So this could be linked to something like hydraulics, they could be like surface area calculations in here. Um, this is one that could be really, really nice question on this. So looking at speed, all the calculations in there, and movement along a line. And that simple sentence covers quite a lot, but one of the things is definitely worth spending a lot of time looking at is distance time and velocity time graphs, because not only does it come up in physics, it comes up in your maths exams as well. So one bit of revision and you can use it in two different places. So definitely something is worth spending some time on. So not only your distance time and your velocity time, but all of Newton's laws and then the acceleration practical as well. So thinking about the different things that we could change, whether it's flat, whether it's on a slope, all the different things you could measure. Um, there are so many different ways to do this practical. Please don't expect the way that it looks in the exam to be exactly the same as how it looks, um, how it looks when you did it in class, because there are so many different ways you can do this. Um, but the fundamentals are all the same. So I'd like you to look at waves, including seismic waves, transverse waves, longitudinal waves, electromagnetic waves. Um, can you do differences? So the difference between transverse, longitudinal, difference between P and S waves. And the difference between one end of the electromagnetic spectrum and the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Can you confidently give a use for all the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and then label that um, line that we would get for this? When we're thinking about practicals, it's not just the ripple tan practical that comes up for this. There is also a standing wave practical that you need to be familiar with. And this is one that catches people out a lot because they kind of forget that there's this is other practical for waves. Another practical that I'd like you to look at is the spring practical. So looking at Hooke's law, extension of a spring. Um, there are so many really nice calculations that come into this. There's so many practical skills, graph skills that come into this. Um, it's a really, really good practical for an exam question. I would like you to look at moment and momentum. Um, two things that, because the words are so similar, students tend to get confused. The moment we're looking at balanced forces and the momentum, something moving, so conservation of momentum as well. And then the forces that are needed to stop things moving. And then the last topic, space physics. We know this is going to come up in some way. And for this year, I fancy the life cycle of a star. This is a lovely six mark question. But then also looking at the structure of the solar system and the evidence for the Big Bang and satellites as well. So um, don't forget, guys, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. I know this is the last paper and you're probably exhausted by this point, but I'm still here for you. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>